It's been five whole months since I've talked about glyphosate. Uh, so I guess it's time to talk about it again. Uh, I talk about glyphosate about as often as I get my hair done, which reminds me, I need to go get my hair done. Yikes. Uh, last time I talked about an overhyped study that suggested that glyphosate uh, is killing the bees. Um, this time I'll be talking about an overhyped study that claims that glyphosate is killing the humans. So we've we've come a long way. Uh, things got a lot worse in the past five months. As a reminder, glyphosate is the main ingredient in Roundup, which is the world's most popular uh, herbicide, which is produced by Monsanto. I'm sorry, I mean, Monsanto. I mean, Monsanto sold themselves to Bayer, so now they're called just Bayer, but everybody associates Monsanto with death and Bayer with like aspirin. So just to be clear for the rest of this video, I'm going to call them Monsanto Bayer because fuck their PR moves. <laughs> uh, before we dive in, let me just state my conflict of interest here. Um, I fucking hate Monsanto Bayer. I think they're an evil corporation. I also think that that is redundant. Um, Monsanto Bayer exists to make money. And if they did find a chemical that made them a lot of money, but cost a lot of human lives, they would 100% bring it to market. And I know this because they've already done that once. Uh, it was a chemical called Agent Orange. It injured or killed millions of people, including American soldiers, if you're the sort of pe person who cares about them, more than 40,000 Vietnamese. Uh, but alas, Roundup is no Agent Orange. Uh, it's one of the most studied products on the planet at this point because people keep insisting that it must cause cancer uh, because Monsanto. Despite that, study after study has shown that that's just not true. Until last month, when a new study was published claiming that glyphosate raises the risk of non-Hodgkin lymphoma, NHL, by 41%. That was the major finding, and that, of course, was the headline that ran in mainstream news, including The Guardian. With any other chemical, this wouldn't really make me bat an eye. Uh, raising the risk of a fairly rare disease by 41% isn't necessarily worth panicking over. Um, about 1,000 of our 360 million Americans will die from NHL this year. Uh, no one wants to lose another 400 people on top of that, but your personal risk of developing this disease is going to be ridiculously low. But the fact that it's a 41% increase that they say is due to an herbicide that has been repeatedly, exhaustively covered in previous research and found to be safe uh, time and time again, that made me pause and wonder where this study is coming from. So this was actually a meta-analysis, which I cover a lot here as it's usually a very useful form of research that collects a bunch of previously done research into one giant study, combining all of their results together to see if a pattern might emerge. But if you collect all the research on glyphosate, it's pretty obvious at this point that the result is going to say that it's safe, because that's what the vast majority of the literature says. You're not going to get a crazy claim like 40% increase in cancer rates. That's where we run into problems with meta-analyses. You can't just include all the research in one new analysis. You have to make sure the initial research was well done and that each study you're including was performed with a similar method to obtain the data. And on the other hand, you can't just pick and choose the studies that have the results that you want to see. So you can't just take it all and you can't just cherry pick the ones you want. You have to have a really good method for picking studies. And I'll give you a moment to guess what the problem might be with this meta-analysis. They included six studies in total. Uh, one of them is a cohort study and the other five are case control. Case control studies mean that these studies look at people who already have the disease and they compare them to a population equal in size of people who don't have the disease. And then they interview all of the people about their lives and their habits, and they look for patterns like, hey, everyone who has this disease also eats shrimp, but no one in the non-disease group does. So maybe shrimp might cause this disease. That's what that means. Uh, these studies can be helpful, but ultimately when studying a rare disease like NHL, you don't have a lot of data points and you might end up with a lot of statistical noise. 
The other problem is that when you ask someone who has a disease about their life before they got the disease, they're more likely to remember the odd things that they think might have caused the disease. So like that shrimp eating contest they won, they're more likely to mention it if they ended up with shrimp disease. Uh, meanwhile, people without the disease might not think to mention the shrimp eating contest they came in second place for because they don't have the disease. It doesn't occur to them as worth mentioning. So in the five studies the researchers chose for this meta-analysis, four of them found a faint correlation between NHL and glyphosate, and one found nothing. Cohort studies are kind of the gold standard, and the one they picked is a really good one in particular. Cohort means that the researchers took a large sample population and kept track of them over the course of many years to see who developed the disease. In this case, the agricultural health study involved watching 45,000 people who came into contact with glyphosate, and they tracked them over the course of 20 years. At the end, the authors found, and I quote, no association between glyphosate and any solid tumors or lymphoid malignancies overall, including NHL and its subtypes. This was a huge study with the specific purpose of trying to find any correlation they could between glyphosate and any of 20 different cancers, and they found nothing. The absolute worst thing they found was that after 20 years, but not 5, 10, or 15 years, there was a just barely statistically significant correlation between glyphosate and acute myeloid leukemia. They recommended someone follow up on that, but said it's not a big deal. So guess which statistic this meta-analysis chose to include? Not the 5, 10, 15, or 20-year results for the dozens of different cancers that showed absolutely no correlation, and not the 5, 10, or 15-year results for acute myeloid leukemia that found no correlation. Nope. They only included the one barely significant 20-year result for acute myeloid leukemia. That one had a relative risk, RR, of 1.12. Every other result was under 1. And had any of those been included in the meta-analysis, the overall risk average would not have been statistically significant in this meta-analysis. And then they never would have been published, let alone had this glowing write-up in The Guardian. Does glyphosate cause cancer? No, it probably doesn't. It just doesn't. This isn't new data. It's old, cherry-picked data that is tricking the general public into being scared of Monsanto. Don't fall for it.